Okay, so keep donating while I'm showing you this game. Okay, so they played a Night Orf. Um, thanks for the five subs, uh, Blamtagious. I think when I did the video of the day, I said these are probably the two best Night Orf players in the world, you know, pre preparation-wise. And then when I watched the video, I was like, wait a minute. I hope I don't get any hate mail from Geary. Gear, I don't know if Geary knows the Night Orf better than either one of these guys, but he might. Probably he doesn't. But Geary will be mad. He'll be like, I'm the world's leading authority on the Night Orf. Now, a really good authority on the Night Orf from both sides is Anand. So Anand and Geary, if they heard what I said, which they won't, they probably be like, what? These guys, these guys suck. Um... These guys are top five in the world in the Night Orf preparation and probably Geary and Anandar also. And obviously when Kasparov was world champion, but you know, he doesn't do theory anymore. Robert E630, gifted a sub. Crimson Hawk subscribed. Hooray. Everybody does everything. Yeah. Anyway, Fabi from the white side of the Night Orf, he, he knows a lot. God damn. Um, yeah. Yeah, I actually was at a casino once and Trump was playing blackjack. Which, you know, makes sense. He owns casinos and you know, has a lot of money. And it was shocking the way he played. Whenever he got two cards, no matter what they were, he, dou he doubled down. He had he had 20 and he, he put out more chips and they're like, you're splitting 10s? He said, no, double down. So he always doubles down. Yeah. Yeah, MVL loses a lot. Bodden's Bishop and Bowden's Bishop gifted a sub. Hooray! Now, when I'm making videos for chess.com, it's a business thing. They, they pay me a lot of money. So I'm not saying, God damn, son of a piece of... I'm not doing that. That's just for entertainment value. When I'm at home, I'm a quiet family man. Yeah. But, you know, when in the stream, I got to go, ah, and, you know, everybody's scared. So that's the Night Orf. And as I said in my video, every move is theory here. Rook G1, H3, G3, F4, F3, Bishop E3, Bishop here, Bishop here, Bishop here, A4, A3, B4. I'm not kidding. And Bishop G5 is the old main line. That's what they played in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And in this position, Black can choose to play by developing like this, or he can play the Poison Pawn. Either way is fine. Play the poison pawn. Okay. You can play e5 or f5 here. They both have a billion trillion grandmaster games. And MVL's faced e5 before. He played h6. You can also take and play knight here and not play h6. But again, this is all just prep. This is all just memorization. 999 cents to dues. Hooray. Um, that's beyond my pay grade. Uh, the best preparation I ever did in my life give you a comparison, is I prepared a line for white in the Botvinnik, anti Moran, Queen's Gambit, crazy line, where every line is 25 moves of theory. Every line. And I wasn't preparing for anyone specific. I just, you know, I have white there sometimes. And I move like 17, 16, the, a move that was never played, the engine said was the best move. So I was like, all right. And I analyzed it with Spencer, myself, and with engines for two months. Um, and then I went to a tournament in Texas, one of the Spice Cups. This is 10 years ago, maybe. Uh, I'm sure you can find the game on the web. And I'm white against... Now, there's two people in the tournament who could play this line, who play it with black. Darwin Yang and uh, Julio Becerra. I was white against Becerra, and he played like King's Indian. So we drew pretty quickly, and he won the tournament easily, by the way. No, I did not. Then around seven or eight, round eight, I played Darwin Yang. Darwin Yang needed two out of two to get a GM norm. And he played me in the penultimate round. He was black. He went right into my prep. And the thing is, he was already out of prep before I played the move he didn't know, that nobody knew. <clears throat> and 
I, I mean, my prep was amazing. And Spencer was watching on the internet live, and he was like, oh, boy. And then I won. I won easy. And then the engine said I played perfect every move, even after my prep. And when the game ended, I explained to him my prep and how other moves lose. And what if I go here? I said, no. And then he said, I'm never playing this line again. I'm never playing the anti the Bafinic, whatever. Um, so that was my best prep ever. I basically prepped 90% of the game. And when my prep was over, I was winning. And it was just easy. So Fabi does that in every single line. I did it once in my life, spending two months on like one position. But he does it all the time. I mean, every game he's prepped in 30 and shit. Terrible. Also, yeah, you can find the game. It's the only game I ever beat Darwin Yang. I don't do well against Darwin Yang, but I do well that game. Spice Cup, sometime between 2010 and 2014. I was white, and I won in like 37 moves maybe. Something like that. Yeah, that was a good game. Only good game I ever played. Terrible. See, if you play thousands and thousands of games, one of them will be good. Okay, so H6, MVL has played previously. Then this is all the main line. Everything's been played dozens of times. Okay. And in this position, every game where white was a strong grandmaster played bishop e2. Developing the bishop, preparing to castle, etc. Mainly etc. And the big prep from Fabi was c3. After C3, MVL was PO'd because he thought R2 was going to D2, but it was actually R1. So I don't know what the problem was. Um, C3 has never been played or analyzed. And I guess for a year, Fabiano and his seconds and his engines analyzed C3. But it's never been played. Uh, MVL played Bishop C5, which is the engine move. Bishop G3 attacks the queen. The queen has to go to D5. And then the real point of the novelty is bishop c4. So MVL is using all kinds of time, and Fabiano's like, yeah, I know this position. Now, remembering stuff isn't easy. Um, and again, this isn't something you would look at with black because the engine hates it for white. It says it's terrible for white. Now, of course, if you leave your engines on for a month, it might say something else. So, okay, you have to take... And then bishop d6 is the point. If you take the bishop, knight takes wins the queen. And if it's white smooth, he takes the bishop and knight d6 is the threat winning the queen. The engines that I've looked at say after bishop d4, black is better. It's a very difficult move for a human. And probably the engine's wrong. It probably has to think another like four hours to get the right evaluation. Um, and I need better engines. The engines I use are crap. Uh, compared to the best engines. Um, a human is, it's really hard to play that move because in the long run, it's so stupid. It's like black's best piece, developed and pinning. Uh, it can trade off for the bishop later so you can castle. I mean, leaving this bishop on d6 forever just seems stupid. So this is really hard for a human to play, but the engines love it. And he played knight f6, which is the second best engine move. And this is forced. This is all forced. You could take on c3 with check, but the engine actually prefers rook g8. So bishop c4 was the first, you know, amazing move from preparation. And this was the second. And the engine actually likes that move. Okay, we got to get that black king. How does Magnus beat Fabi? They played a 12-game world championship match, and Magnus won zero games. And then when they play in slow chess, I mean, the last time they played, I think Fabi won. Um, Magnus beats Fabi in Blitz, Bullet, and, and Rapid. In slow chess, I mean, probably their record's about equal. Yeah. It's close anyway. If Magnus is ahead, it's not by much. Yeah. Um, Fabi's prep is the best in the world, in my opinion. Clearly better than, than Magnus's. Um, when Kasparov was world champion, his prep was the best. Fisher's prep was the best. Some people just had Anand's prep was the best. But yeah. 
I mean, prep is just one part of the game. Then you got to play the game. I mean, and the prep that you prepped doesn't happen very often because people play other stuff. And you have to remember your prep when somebody goes into it. And Fabi claims to have memorized a million moves. And so remembering all of them is very difficult. Because obviously earlier in this game, Black could have played differently at seven different points. And this is still his prep. He had to memorize dozens of lines. And, you know, you have to remember them. Sometimes people don't remember them. That happens a lot, especially in U.S. chess. A lot of IMs and GMs in the U.S., after the game, they complain they forgot their prep. Happens all the time. Yeah. If Naka had Fabi's prep, he would be a better player. Yeah. Okay. White cannot castle in this position for two reasons. It's Black's move, and it's illegal. Okay. So he traded Queens. Check. Now, this is another funny thing. The engine says these moves are about equivalent. Who's going to play King D7 walking and, you know, walking on sunshine? Okay, so he played here. That's the human move. And in my opinion, I can't prove it. This is where Fabi's prep ended. Position's about equal, but it's easier to play white because the past pawns aren't dangerous right now. Black's king is exposed. A lot of black pieces are on the back rank, and white's rooks and bishop are fabulous. So the engine says equal, but I think grandmasters want white here. They don't want to play black. Okay, and the play was sort of boring at this point. And the one thing I like that Fabi did was he gave up his great bishop um, to mess up the pawns. I think it's good to cre create the two weaknesses. And again, the game was technically drawn until it wasn't. And I'll show you like what some of the mistakes but even my analysis of the game probably wasn't right. Okay. And this, this position is a table-based draw. You can look this up on the internet on table bases or if you bought them and it's a draw, but it's hard to draw. And you're going to lose the A pawn for sure. You can't, you can't save the A pawn. And when you lose the A pawn, you're still drawing. Yeah. And in this position, according to what I saw on the internets, uh, after king f4, getting out of check, knight f5 is the only drawing move according to what I saw on the internet. I'm not saying it is, but... And then Magnus is like, MVL is a genius at defending, and he played it, stopping rook g3 check. And then I think knight h6 loses, and one of these moves or both of them draw because the knight here is like trapped. But I think later in the game he was drawing because Fabi messed it up. Yeah, this is winning for white, and I think... It's a draw now. And I'll tell you where he lost it again. Uh, again. Y yeah. I think in this position he made the losing move. But maybe it was later. Supposedly knight c7 to e8 to g7 draws. You want the knight on g7. So the king can't enter from the sque three squares it can enter at. And it can't enter here because there's a pawn there. So for some reason, this is the best square because it controls all these squares. So 97 is a mistake. And I think here, again, I think this, does this draw or that loses? I think it loses now. Yeah, it loses because I can play rook here. My king's too far up. One of the winning ideas is if the knight goes somewhere here, you can just take the knight and take the pawn and it's an easy win. So you got to watch for the sacrifices. Yeah. Can he get his knight here somehow? No, he can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, the h6 is just a terrible square for the knight. Yeah, now it's an easy win. So when I was watching the game live, I was thinking the winning idea is to go here and come in somehow. But you can't do that. However, you can do that. That's a lot easier. Um, and then when you do that, you're winning. And so that's why the rook wants to go to the G file so the king can't come over. So what, black's in a lot of zugzwangs. Thanks, C Kappa 14. It's, this ending's too difficult for most of you watching the stream. And by most of you, I mean all of you. 
And it's a little too difficult for me to play the right move, but I can understand why some things are winning and some aren't. Um, but I'm not going to play as well as either player, and even they're going to make mistakes. So it's, it's too difficult unless you're, a, you're a, a, a table base, then you just know all the right moves. But for a human, it's very difficult. And Magnus was using the table base to figure out what to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, the winning idea is this. And black is in Zugzwang in a lot of positions. Like, this is fine. Just stay there. Don't move. But he has to move. And if he moves his king to the G file, I play king h4 check, like king g6, stopping this. I check, and you have to defend your knight, and then I come in. Once he came in, the game ended really quickly. Yeah. And nobody should resign here, um, but if you leave the engine running for any amount of time, like 20 seconds, it says white's really winning, like plus a million. So <clears throat> the only move I would play here if I decided not to resign, and I wouldn't resign, um, is I would play this. That's what I would play if I didn't resign. And then every move wins. The engine says they're all plus nine, so that's not good. Um, actually, it likes this the best. I don't know why. And then if I was black and didn't resign, I would go here. And then I wouldn't know what to do. Now, now I give up. Do something. Yeah, I guess I go here. I don't know. And rookie one check forces the king away. That's not good. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's that's not good. The king is here. No. Yeah, now I'd resign if I was black. Now I understand. I understand now. So a really nice game from both players. Really good preparation from Fabi. And MVL lost a draw an ending, but it was very difficult to draw or to understand. <laughs> and Fabi found, you know, the right way to win. And, you know, you should win up a rook for a knight, but you don't. I mean, if two, if two uh, engines are playing and have access to table bases, then th this is a draw. That you don't win. But even using table bases, it's hard to understand why some moves win and some draw. But there's a lot of zugzwangs, and all you have to know is from White's point of view, White wants to get in here. If White gets in there, he's winning. If the king comes here, then I'm just going to win because I overpower you. you got to keep my king out so I don't win. And this actually doesn't work. That was my idea. But this does work. And, and that's why you don't put your rook on the supposed active ranks because you're trying to stop the black king from stopping the white king. So Fabi figured that out right away, that he wanted his rook on the G file and cut the king off and then try to get in here. And then you just win. Then the king and rook are both active, and you it's still Zugzwang. There's a lot of positions where if black doesn't move, he's not going to lose. right? If the knight's on e7 and black doesn't move anymore, I guess you could still win with king h7, rook g7 check? Maybe. Probably. Maybe. I think. But yeah, I mean, black has to move at some point and let... Move the king away from white's king or move the knight away so things can come in. And it makes sense that white's winning when he gets the winning position because I would just think it's winning anyway. I'm shocked that it's a table-based draw because this looks impossible to draw. And to draw it, you have to play, you know, the, en the engine moves, the, the table-based moves, and you're just not going to do it. Two humans in a game. The game went six and a half hours. Yeah, ridiculous.